ABC 17 News investigates the mid-Missouri bus crash that injured 14 people on their way home from a church trip in Houston. The crash happened July 14, 2022. The driver veered off the highway, crashing the bus into a shed, fence, and house. That driver admitted to falling asleep, but has pleaded not guilty after being cited by the highway patrol. With federal and state safety regulations in place to prevent overtired drivers, I wanted to know why the driver couldn't stay awake, and I'm digging into what led up to him nodding off. 2.30 in the morning. Call County Fire personnel, ask him with injuries. And we just drove off. 7400 block of Highway 54. Kids and adults from Emanuel Lutheran Church and School injured in a wrecked bus on Highway 54 in Cole County. Uh, you know, a couple of feet either way, uh, we would have had a, a much worse outcome. 22 juveniles on the bus and six adults. All because the driver fell asleep. Quote, I fell asleep and lost control. I was knocked out of my seat and fell down on the floor. End quote. That was the statement the driver, Thomas Babbitt, gave to troopers in the detailed crash report I obtained from Highway Patrol. Babbitt was charged with careless driving and not wearing a seatbelt. I went to his arraignment in Cole County in October, where his lawyer entered a not guilty plea. Looking for more answers about what happened that night, I called Babbitt on the phone. The man that answered confirmed he was Thomas, also known as Tony Babbitt. When I identified myself, he quickly said, quote, no comment. I told him I was reaching out to give him the opportunity to tell his side of the story. Again, he replied, quote, no comment. I also reached out to Babbitt's attorney, T.J. Kirch. I was just reaching out um, to see if you guys wanted the opportunity to tell his side of the story. We do not. He declined an interview. On the morning of the crash, state troopers recorded witness statements from passengers to include in the official crash report. One of those passengers said, quote, I was noticing he was tired, end quote. That person went on to say, quote, I thought he was tossed from the bus. He was down in the rubble on the stairs. He immediately called his coworkers. He left a voicemail telling someone he fell asleep. But why was Babbitt so tired? It prompted me to dig deeper. The bus, operated by White Knight Limousine, started the drive in Houston, Texas. The crash happened in Cole County, minutes from the drop-off location. Maps show the drive from Houston to the Jefferson City drop-off is around a 12 and a half to 13 hour drive. Motor coach operator can drive 10 hours in a 24 hour period. This means Babbitt could have started that trip and worked over the 10 hour limit, or he switched out with another driver. Well, they have to have at least eight hours off in a 24 hour period. But what happens if someone's working as a part time driver or has two jobs? Is anyone monitoring what they're doing in their off hours? You know, it's hard to mandate somebody sleep in their off duty time. We can't we can't regulate, you know, what they do. So obviously, yes, sleep would be good, but it's very hard to regulate that. I was able to confirm through searching ambulance licensing databases that Thomas Babbitt is currently licensed to drive an ambulance in the state of Missouri. I was also able to confirm Babbitt was indeed on the employee roster for the Cooper County Ambulance District in the month of July 2022, the same month as the crash. According to rules from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, drivers are supposed to be logging their driving hours for both jobs to count toward the operating limits of 60 hours per week or 70 hours in an eight day period. And I'll use the paramedic as the example. Paramedics are typically firefighters, you know, they do a 24 hour shift. Not all of that time is spent working. Some of that time is resting. So the time that they spend resting, they can show it as off duty. I sent a records request to the Cooper County Ambulance District asking for the hours that each ambulance driver drove that month. The department denied my request based on their belief a time card for a taxpayer funded position is not public information. I then replied with a new request directly asking if Thomas Babbitt drove an ambulance in the days and nights leading up to the crash, the day of the crash and the days after. 
Cooper County Ambulance again denied to supply me with an answer, saying it believes this information would be part of a personnel file. I'm looking to get in touch with the owner of White Knight Limousine. Um, I have a couple of questions. I also reached out to the bus company, White Knight Limousine, multiple times to ask questions about when Babbitt started driving and for his driver hours log. White Knight has not returned any of my calls. Back in September, I sent a Freedom of Information request to the U.S. Department of Transportation that does the investigations for these types of things, asking for inspection reports, records of citation, and hour log data related to this incident. I received this response saying the department is experiencing a 9 to 11 month backlog. It said that the information I requested could take up to 11 months to receive, which would put that at August of 2023. Thomas Babbitt's next hearing is scheduled for December 20th. You can count on ABC 17 News to be there and follow this story.